welcome to Wootier 5, where today we're looking at Bit Defender. Why are we looking at Bit Defender? Well, our Linus, as you can see on screen here, is just in a paid promotion for Bit Defender. First, I think, for his channel. And it's reached over half a million people, so there'll be quite a fair few people looking to pull the trigger on Bit Defender. What the hell's that got to do with me, though? Well, I've been using Bit Defender for four years consecutively, so I know a few things about Bit Defender. I've been using it quite extensively over the last four years uh, for my business PC and all my other devices as well. So I know quite a few things about it so I can add to the conversation and just share my experiences good and bad with Bitdefender. For anyone looking to pull the trigger, it's good to get an overall bigger picture before you buy it, especially with this kind of thing because you need to know you're buying something decent, uh, which you're not gonna get the full picture on a sponsored spot. I think that kind of goes without saying. Starting with some of the good things that I like about Bitdefender, uh, just before we do get started, just the version that I'm using is Total Security. That's the all sing and all dance and top of the line one. I've used that for four years. I haven't went for anything less. So the first big selling point for me was that Bitdefender allowed you to use their software legally across multiple devices. It used to be three, but it's now five. And that's absolutely fantastic. That's brilliant that they'll let you do that. Uh, and five devices is, I mean, it's more than enough for most people. Most people, normal people, don't have five devices even in the average family home you probably don't have five windows based pcs so that's uh, that's got you covered in pretty much all circumstances for most people anyway uh, the application itself another thing i like about it is that it's silent that is really really important to me because i am i am very tech savvy like most of you guys will be i'm very tech savvy but one of the things that i've got no time for no inclination of messing around with is my internet security, it's antivirus and firewalls. I wanna buy it, install it, it's got one job to do, keep the PC safe, just go and do it, and don't bother me. And it does that really well, and it, another good thing about it is that it just does it right off the bat. You don't need to mess about with the antivirus settings or the firewall settings, it will just install and work from day one. If you want to though, you can go into the features and start configuring exclusions if you've got certain folders, or firewall if you've got certain areas that you want it to access or systems you want to access this PC you can set those exceptions up obviously yeah it's got a rich feature set in terms of protection you've got antivirus you've got ransomware protection you've got uh, anti-spam in privacy features you've got the ability to like block programs from accessing your webcam that you don't want to get at and safe pay this is something they, I believe, have fixed very recently, but this nearly made me cancel my subscription. SafePay, very strange name for it, is like an isolated Bitdefender web browser. Whenever you access like a banking website, it'll launch this separate browser, which they say is like an isolated, safe container environment, and then it'll let you browse your banking website away from any sort of intrusions which sounds great, but it just didn't work very well. It really didn't work very well. Uh, everything that you've got saved in your banking website, like your use, like usernames, that kind of thing, it just didn't come through. It was just a pain in the backside. But what was worse than that, what the, the killer was for me, when you said don't use SafePay, it would still insist on using it. You'd still get a notification pop up, like the little chime to say, do you, I see, we see you're at a banking website. Would you like to use SafePay? I'm like, no, I told you last time to not show me this again and now you show me this, stop it. And then it would just continuously, perpetually keep prompting you for safe pay. But I believe they've stopped that now and that's fixed, which is good. Which shows that they're quite good with fixing issues and being reactive with support issues, which is a good thing. Uh, we've got a number of tools in here, which to be honest, they overlap quite heavily with what Windows can offer out of the box now. Like uh, disk cleanup, which goes through and clears cache files and whatnot and Windows updates and bits and pieces like that. Startup Optimizer will go through and tell you what applications and processes are delaying your Windows startup and then you can go and optimize that if you want to if you really care about that uh, you've got activity monitors which will tell you what's been going on notifications you've got various settings which you can just leave these at default but this is one that I would highly recommend turning off this one infuriated me just because I'm, I'm like that but um, with this turned on now and again not very often granted maybe once every few months, Bitdefender would show a Windows notification with an advert, like, for Bitdefender tools though, so it's not like it's showing you Pepsi or Coke commercials, which would be like crossing the line, but um, it was like big, huge squares would pop up at the bottom right-hand corner of Windows saying half price off certain Bitdefender tools, and I'd be like, uh, yeah, you can stop that. So I found this and then that turns that off. 
So yeah, with these settings, it runs very, very silently, which is a really good thing for me. I just don't want to see it. As much as I like it and I buy it, I don't want to have to see it. And that's one of the good things I like about Bitdefender. So overall, over the four years, I've not had any issues with it. It's not let anything through that it shouldn't have done. And uh, it's just done the job. That's what's what you want from it. That's all you can ask from it. Just do the job. Keep me safe and don't bother me. And it does that very, very well. Things that I don't like about it, which I think you would need to know about before you buy it. And the first, <laughs> first thing is the price variations. Oh, as great as their program is, the variations in the price that they offer the program for make you feel like this is a bit of an amateur cheap outfit. What I mean by that, the price can vary <laughs> from, like, from a set price to nearly double it based on where you're, you're looking. What they try and do is they entice you in with a, with a good price. In the UK, it's about £35 a year which is pretty cheap, especially for five devices. But they'll automatically enable auto renewal. And in 12 months time, they will charge you double that. And to prove that, I'm obviously coming up to auto renewal. So I got this email here. So your bit defender total security 2017 expires, well, for me, what, in 10 days? Uh, you'll be automatically billed 69.99. They will bill me 70 pounds if I was to allow my subscription to auto renew. And so you might think to yourself, well, that's the price of it. 70 quid is the price. You might have got it for £35 on day one, but that's the price. No, it's not. That's a chance. That that They're, they're chancing their arm that you're just going to let it auto-renew and they're going to get double the money off you. If you go into your Bitdefender account, just go to renew, right? This is within my own account. I am renewing from within my own account here. If the price comes up, is £35. Yet they're quite happy to let me pay £70 on an auto-renewal. So every single year, I've got to cancel the auto renewal and then go and do a manual purchase at half the price. But if you look around hard enough, you might find other offers on various different Bitdefender websites for less than that. It's infuriating and it makes you think less of Vangate as a, as a corporation. Just offer me the best price you've got. I shouldn't have to do this to pay half the price of what you're going to charge me on auto renewal. It's pretty bad. It makes you think that they're taking advantage of you. If you just let it auto renew, they're charging you double what they really, you know, the, the application's really worth. That's not nice. That's really, really not nice. So that is a thing that you have to be careful of. And the other thing about this is if you do click buy now, it makes you feel like you're taking me off to a separate website here. How, how do I know that all of this here is gonna link into my account? How, am I starting up a new account here? I don't know. I really don't know. I'm hoping it does, but you know, it's a chance and there's nothing on this page here to indicate. So I'm quite comfortable just showing all this because there's nothing here that links back to my account. So um that's a pretty bad that's a, that's a bad thing that I don't like about Bitdefender. Every year you've got to go out of your way to make sure you're not paying more than what you actually really should be paying. Uh, the other thing which I don't like about Bitdefender is the number of different websites they've got. Like if you go to uh, Google, right, just search for Bitdefender, right, you've got the Bitdefender, you've got the Bitdefender.co.uk website, you've got Bitcentral.bitdefender.com, and then you've also got this one here, which is Store.bitdefender.com, which contains all of your orders and all of your previous subscriptions. So you've got numerous different Bitdefender areas, which, to be honest, you've you, they don't link into each other. So from within Bitdefender Central, I can't get to my account details. I can't see all my previous subscriptions. The fact that I've been a customer, right, this one here, that I've been a customer for four years, which is this link here, my account, I can't get to that through the standard Bitdefender Central portal. It's not linked together. So there's some separation between all the various Bitdefender areas and you don't know which one you've got to go to to get it, the right bit of information. But I do find that the Bitdefender portal here, the one that manages your devices, is the one that you find yourself at most often. And you need day-to-day -day tasks, you tend not need to be here. But anything that you would need to do, you would do it from here. Uh, right. Another thing which is not so good about Bitdefender is their ransomware and their firewall features are overly sensitive at times. Uh, and also you get quite a few false positives on the antivirus. So things like crypto mining, if you do any crypto mining, pretty much every miner will flag up as a Trojan. 
Uh, I've had Autodesk applications from one of the biggest software companies in the world. Their applications flag up as having Trojans in when they obviously don't. And yeah, so you do get quite a few false positives, but the ransomware is probably the worst of the lot. I run day to day with this turned off, which unfortunately flags this as being your devices at risk and you get notifications about it as such. The ransomware protection will block pretty much every installer that you try and run from Steam games through to just any small niche application, even bigger applications as well. It'll start siphoning files from the installer thinking that they're dodgy and it just breaks installers completely. So you've got to uninstall them and then reinstall them with this turned off. So for the most part, I'll run with this turned off. But if I know I'm going from a period of time where I'm not going to install anything, I'll turn it back on. And the final thing that I'm not so keen about is that it can conflict with other applications. Not so much anymore. Like I said, Bitdefender are quite good with fixing their shit. But there's been times where this conflicts with... I mean, for example, I use XSplit. You can see it creeping in on the, on the left-hand side. I use XSplit to do all my local recordings for YouTube for a period of time. And might actually still, I'm not sure... Bitdefender conflicts with XSplit, so you've got to set up a, an exception and exclude the XSplit exe file from being scanned. And there's been a couple of other things that it's conflicted with, like Autodesk installers, where it's just it freezes the installers until you disable antivirus, and then it kind of goes ahead. But they are much, much less frequent now than they used to be back in the day. Uh, but it still has a couple of conflicts which can flash up, just because it's just so sensitive and, and strict on certain things. But overall... I'm sticking with it. It is one of the best out there I've found. Uh, and it's just it just does the job nicely. The moment it starts becoming an issue and I have to start tending to it on a day-to-day -day basis is the moment that I'll stop using it. It needs to be silent and it needs to be passive in the background. And for the most part, it does that at the moment. So I'm quite happy with it. But those are the good things I like about it. Those are the not so good things that I don't like about it. Overall, I'm probably going to run you. I'm going to have to scout around and try and find the cheapest price, which is a menace. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be sticking with it probably for a fifth year. But yeah, I'd stick my neck out and say that it's definitely a worthwhile purchase, especially if you're a home user, home office user, and you've got multiple devices to protect. It's a, it's a good safe bet for that. Okay, dokie, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodle.